Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kev here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over um, interview questions. So usually I go over interview questions and I tell people like, dude, girl, guy, whoever, give me your interview questions and I try to answer it to the best of my ability. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, do IT videos, that stuff support me. It's all about how to get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. That way you know when I go live. All right? Greatly appreciate it. So... Let's go over some questions today. So these are the questions that someone was asked during a job interview and I'm going to see if I can answer them to the best of my ability, okay? So question number one, how would you change the name of a computer? So that's, a, that's, a, that's something that we have gone over a couple of times already. So my answer to that would be um, you can change the name of a computer by going into C, draw, C Explorer and the yellow, triangle, the yellow folder. Basically, you click on the yellow folder, you go to this PC or my PC, you right click on it, and you hit properties. And then you go into uh, uh, change settings, you click on change settings, and you just rename the computer. Once you do that, it's going to prompt you to restart your computer. So that's it. Usually when you change the name of a computer, it's going to make you restart your computer. And that's pretty much it. And, and, and um, nothing complicated. That's an easy question, hopefully, for everyone. Um, question number two. How would you change the resolution of a monitor? So to change the resolution of a monitor, you could do it um, physically on the computer. So you could literally you could press the button underneath the, the monitor. And you could physically change the display there. Uh, and, it's not the same thing as changing it on, on, on Windows 10 or doing it on the software side of it, if that makes sense. You could physically do it on the monitor or you could physic or you could just do it by going into your desktop, right click anywhere on your desktop, go to display settings and just change the change it, change the uh, the aspect ratio to whatever you want, if that makes sense. You could change the resolution to, to ten eighty by whatever. So you just go there and just go to the drop down, just change the settings there. If that makes sense. Um how would you clear the cache of a Chrome browser? So that that is another um, that's another question that was asked. And that one basically, you go into Chrome, um, you click on the little three dots on the top right hand side, and then you click uh, history, and then you click clear history, and then you have the ability to clear cla uh, cache, browsers, history, and everything, and just clear all that. You clear like 24 hours, seven days ago, all time, which is everything. So that's entirely up to you, and how do you want to do it? So. To answer that question, uh, next question: How would you reset? How would you reset the password of a user on Active Directory? So literally, you go into Server. Um, let me see. Yeah. So literally, you go into Server Manager if you have access to that. Otherwise, you would just have Active Directory users and computers. Um, you right-click on your domain. You do search. You search for the domain. You, you search. You search all domains, basically you can search the whole domain or the whole container and then you look for the name, you right click on their name, you hit reset password and you have the option to reset password and have them change password on next login or you have the option to reset just the password and just leave it alone like that if you want and just click OK. So you, you put the password in, you confirm the password and then you hit OK. That makes sense. Alright. Uh, next question. If you do not have access to the domain controller, how would you access Active Directory from your PC? So this is something I gone over before. Um, you would literally install RSET tools on your computer. So a lot of these companies will not give you access to touch a server. So what you have to do is you have to install RSET tools. So I would go into my Windows administration tools or Windows, uh, I guess, add features. And I would go into there and I would add RSET tools to answer that question. Once you have RSET tools installed on the computer, you have to restart your computer. And I gone over this before. Um, next question. A user calls you and says he or she cannot access a website. How would you troubleshoot this? So this is this is this happens to me all the time. So typically, if someone cannot access a website, what I would do is I would literally grab my phone. Right, this is the best way to do it. Grab your phone. I will literally grab my phone. I will literally see if I can access the website without being on the company Wi-Fi. Maybe our company Wi-Fi is blocking it, or our, our company internet is blocking it. So I would test the website using my phone. And testing the website that way. If it works on my phone, then that means we're blocking it for web filtering reasons, or we're blocking it for security reasons. Obviously, at that at that point, you have to go into your network admin team or whoever team you have a point of escalation, and you have to ask them to allow it. If that makes sense. So that's how I would answer that question. So obviously, if it works on your phone and 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 there's no, it's working on your phone. Then obviously, there's an issue going on with the with the IT side of things. It's part of being blocked for security reasons. Uh, next question. What advice would you give a user who asks you what steps or he or she should take to secure his or her home computer? 
So for that, I would I would probably enable password. You know, just put a password in there. I would probably enable um, certain things like. I will probably have the user create a local account and I have an admin account. I'll have an admin account on the back end, but just a local account so they don't, because if you're an admin, you have access to do everything. I would just create a local account on that computer. That would be my advice for someone that's trying to get a home computer and they're trying to secure the home computer. On top of that, I will probably, I will probably do some, some, um, I don't know, like maybe, maybe do some security on that computer. Maybe have, um, if, if that computer has, has fingerprints, you can enable fingerprint. You could enable biometric biometrics. I might do that as well. Depending what what kind of computer it is, I would set it up that way. And then I'll probably enable um, uh, passcode or, or or pin or something like that on that computer. So the only person that can log in is them because they only know the pin. And I would see how they're logging with their own account, not not a admin account, if that makes sense. So that's my advice for that for someone that has a home computer. Um, next question. What is static and dynamic IP? So a static IP is usually typically, it's just an IP address that doesn't change. So you basically, you're, you're giving someone a static IP, that IP doesn't change. An example of that would be is when you have a printer and you're working in a, in a school environment or any type of environment and you want to you wanna have a static IP, you will sign it at 10.1.2.5 or whatever, and basically that, that's what it is, and the IP never changes. A dynamic IP is actually an IP that changes over time because of release, because of, uh, I said release, sorry, because of reservations or release time, and I, this IP does change over time because of the domain controller or the server you have, and it actually assigns a new IP address every certain amount of days. So basically, that's the difference between a dynamic IP and a static IP, if that makes sense. All right. Last question. A user's Outlook profile is corrupted, and after all the troubleshooting, it is determined that the mail account must be removed and re-added. How would you do this? So to do that is you go into Control Panel, um, you click on Mail, and you click on New Email, New Account, and just make a new account, and then just create a new account. And that's it. And you hit OK, OK, and it opens up a new account. So the Outlook profile is, is corrupted, you just make a brand new one. Or you have the other option where basically you just you just go into that OST profile and just delete it. It's entirely up to you. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. Um, hopefully, it, hopefully this helps you out in some shape or form. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. All right? Take care. Peace. Later.